Hello, my loves. Welcome back to another channel here on Starseed Academy. My name is Jenny. Today, I want to talk with you about the eclipse season. It is starting officially March 25th and running until April 8th. But as we know, with these kinds of energies, they can start a little bit beforehand. So you're probably already feeling it and have been for a couple of days. So we're going to talk about what that looks like and some predictions for the huge Great North American Eclipse for April 8th that have come through. Now, before we jump into all of this information, I just want to share with you that if you are looking to go on a journey with me to become a professional channeler, to become the most potent, detailed, accurate channeler in your highest energy, you know, in your highest um, version of you as a channeler, and, and use that to create beautiful offers, services, a business, add to the business that you have, then I have a really powerful program that just came out and it's all about channeling. It's dedicated to channelers and aspiring channelers. So I work with professionals and I work with beginners and everybody is welcome inside of this course and everybody will walk away from this in with a new version of their own channel and themselves. It's such a transformation. So this is an eight week program called Channeler of Light. I'm holding a, a, a window, a short window where there is a pre-sale price and that's gonna be ending really quickly. So make sure to check out the link in the description of this video or come and find me over on Instagram and DM me if you want more information, but do save your seat right away because it's starting in April. And this is um, only, this is something that I've only run once before in my entire business. I did Channeler of Light one other time. And since I've done it that one time, it's been completely revamped <laughs> to be, you know, go from like a four week, I think, journey to an eight week journey. And it is just so transformative. And you will leave with everything that you need to be a professional channeler. I'm taking you through everything that I do including every single Claire, how to layer the Claire's up to get more depth in your messages, how to deal with all the different things that come up when you're learning to channel, like the pause when there's no information coming, feeling like you've lost the connection, getting contradicting messages, you know, getting like feeling like it's all unclear and fuzzy, like how to deal with all of that and taking you into being a professional channeler, whether you want to use written channeling, which I'll be teaching in this course, or spoken channeling, which I'll also be teaching uh, right up to how to host your own professional reading. So anyway, I'll stop talking about it, but you'll know if it's for you. You'll feel something ugh, inside like, oh, I've been waiting for this, right? It's going to be so powerful. All right. So today we are talking about the eclipse. I want to share with you a message that came through about two weeks ago already preparing us for this window of this eclipse season. And this is something that came through that I shared with my uh, with my email subscribers. So if you're not on that list, make sure you get on there for weekly energy reports. So this came through uh, about two weeks ago for my energy or for my email subscribers. And I'm going to read it to you because it's a great preface for the information that we're going to be diving into. So just some facts. The eclipse season, like I said, it runs from March 25th to April 8th. The Great North American Eclipse on April 8th will be a momental total solar eclipse that lasts for about 4 minutes and 28 seconds, making it one of the longest total solar eclipses of the 21st century. And energy from this eclipse is going to last after that point on April 8th weeks, even months after, and not necessarily the energy of that eclipse, but the ripple effect of what it's going to cause in our society. Okay. And so this is something that I've actually been talking about since 2020. You can find like videos of me talking about April 8th, 2024. Oh my God, I can't wait. This is going to be so crazy four years ago. And here we are and it's upon us and it's, it's really exciting, but it's also something to to be prepared for emotionally, energetically, know what to expect, know how to get the best out of the energy that you can. Um, and I don't know, like I would even just say, if you could take the day off of work, just be in your own energy that day, it could be a very powerful thing for you to do. Because just the first thought here before I share Metatron's message, the first thought coming through for me around this is, this is almost like going into a bit of a void moment on April 8th, where everything, you know, symbolically goes black when the sun gets blacked out. 
And in that void moment, everybody has an opportunity to choose the timeline that they want to connect with when the void is over. So if you picture the void moment of April 8th, like an elevator, your intention is like choosing the floor and you want to choose your highest timeline because collectively humanity the highest timeline of humanity is each one of us on our highest timeline, right? It's just like with new earth, it starts inside one person at a time and we create it from our own experiences. So if we are not on our own personal highest timeline, then the collective can't be on its. So a lot of the time it feels like you want to do outward action, but the way to help the collective, which is humanity and the earth and everything, is actually to help yourself first. And that is how you help, right? So, but we can we can focus on that day on April 8th. What I plan to do, you know, during the eclipse is focus my intention and my energy on choosing the highest timeline for myself and on humanity choosing its highest timeline as well. Because the awakening cannot be stopped due to like planetary movements like Gaia is going to orbit around Alcyone in the Pleiades uh, uh, constellation and she will be going deeper into the photon belt of light as we know right again I've talked about that in a lot of videos as well that can't be stopped but what we can do is we can choose whether we go into our awakening kicking and screaming as a collective or with a more gentler energy of acceptance and surrender to all of the evolution and changes that we're about to experience as we go deeper into that photon belt of light. Okay, so um, you can hear more about this in uh, my, my recent video, the one before this one, which was called um, The Starseed Mission, Secrets of the Starseed Mission. I talk a lot about this in that. So if you want more information about the awakening and how it can't be stopped and how to choose the proper timeline, then check out that video. Let's go back to the eclipse. Okay, so here's a, a, the following is a message from Metatron about what we can expect. This was two weeks ago though, now though, and I'm going to be like sharing with you more update information, but this is like important too. So he said, and I, and I'm, I work with Metatron a lot, and so I do tend to channel him a lot. And this is an ascended master in case anybody doesn't know who he is. He is both a, an archangel. Some people call him Archangel Metatron, but he's also ascended master Metatron, which means he's both, right? He's in the ascended realms, but he's also an angelic being. And an ascended being means that they've worked through their own soul journey of descension followed by ascension, especially ones that have experienced earth have a lot to offer us because they understand what we're going through and they've already been through it. So here's what he said. He said, this will be a controlled time of darkness where the light protects itself and hides itself away. The awakened will all collectively feel the pull to go inward for a time as the darkness purges up in a great wave of anger and rage. This is all divinely orchestrated with chosen players to trigger the purge to its apex, and it is necessary in order to clear your lands of their stored darkness. This eclipse season will bring forth a purge in the collective, and you are included in this. Each one of you carries a form of darkness that is ready to be seen and released. Choose to meet your shadows with compassion, patience, gentleness, and understanding. This is a great opportunity for you, not a punishment. This won't last, and in the end, it will be very empowering towards your mission of unity. Let it flow out and trust the process. Do not add to the fear. Acceptance is the key. So, it was a little ominous. <laughs> the fact that that came through two weeks ago, I was like, they are already preparing us. So let's see what came through today. Um, and this is being filmed Thursday, the 21st. Okay. So what came through today about this eclipse season is, first of all, I know that it technically starts March 25th with a lunar eclipse. But every time I ask about the eclipse season, spirit directs me to April 8th, April 8th, April 8th. So I do feel like it's overshadowing the first eclipse. So it's not that you wouldn't be feeling it. It's just that what's about to happen is so much bigger. Uh, the energy is so much bigger around April 8th. That truly is like its own like monumental like uh, event that everything else just feels a little bit smaller in comparison. But I did try to pull some energy about 
eclipse season, which starts on the 25th and the leading up. And they basically said, and I was talking to Metatron again, plus the Council for Humanity, which is a faction of the Galactic Federation of Light. And they said there will feel like there is a building sensation that will really come in. If you're not already feeling it, it will really kick in on the 25th. That building sensation feels like you're almost going up a hill of tension and sensation of that anticipation basically as you lead into that into that big moment and right now the way that i'm experiencing some of this is as as energy builds up there's always a purge effect and i'm experiencing a baby purge in preparation for a much larger one that's about to hit us and that looks like dreaming about old relationships dreaming about old friends dreaming a lot about old jobs and also just like dreaming or having it pop into my mind uncomfortable moments from the past. You know what I mean? Like just a weird trip down memory lane of stuff you completely forgot about. People you completely forgot about. You're like, oh yeah, like it's just such a weird, awkward energy. And I do feel like that's a baby purge of just discomfort in your system being ready to be released because you're no longer that person. And it's really uncomfortable to look at situations from your past as who you are now, looking back, you're like, I am just, that is just not me. That is not how I would react now that like, I'm almost, it's like cringy, right? You're almost embarrassed to be like, oh my God, like what, you know? So if you're experiencing that, you're already experiencing the building up sensation up to April 8th. And really that was all they talked to me about and more might come through as we get closer, but that's all that they said around the, the March 25th lunar eclipse they just that's what they shared but if we're going to talk about april 8th there's a lot more so they're saying april 8th has a force of gravity around it like a black hole um, and it energetically pulls towards it like a black hole would but because it's above us it's going to feel like we're being pulled upwards and it's basically like any lower frequencies in your body that are below neutrality are going to start to be pulled up and kind of feel like going out the top of your head or maybe coming out of the heart, depending on how your personal system purges. Um, and so the energies that you might be holding on to, and this, remember, this is microcosm and macrocosm. That means it's happening to you personally on an individual micro level, but it's happening collectively on this large macro level as well. So think about like, the collective experiencing a purge coming from lower chakras pulled all the way up out the top of your head, right? The energy that's being purged, we're specifically going to see judgment, a lot of judgment. So that is, you know, separation and hate and anger, but it's really focused on judgment. Okay, so where does that still exist within you? Where are you still judging yourself or others? And you can expect that to be brought into the light in a big way for you, especially like April 8th itself, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, like in that maybe five days kind of thing. So the lower chakras that, you know, from your, from your solar plexus, your sacral, your root, your feet, and, and your lower chakras like that, your earth star chakra, they all really need this clearing. And that, that energy gets pulled upwards, like I said, so you might feel it in the heart, or you might feel it in the crown on the way out. So this can feel when it's in the crown, it can feel like electric, uh, buzzing, headaches, migraines. In the heart, it can feel very sensitive and emotional on the way out, like you're feeling it as it leaves. So either way or both, unfortunately, that's definitely a possibility. Um, and the collective level purge. So remember, this is personally happening to you. And then on the collective level of all of humanity, what this looks like or might feel like, it's going to seem like this big negative burst of energy from the collective. Um, but is it actually negative if it's clearing? Because we know that when you, I, I know a lot of, you can use like the this kind of like corny visual where if you want to scrub a pot clean, and it looks like the water is clean and the pot's just soaking in the sink of soapy water. The water looks all right. But as soon as you start scrubbing to try to clean that pot, everything gets dirtier and worse, right? And that's like a purge, right? So it's not that it's negative. It's that it's going to seem like a big influx of that dirty dishwater everywhere all around you, like chaotic in a way. But that's the, how it gets clean. 
you know, that's how the, the purge is how we clear. So I know that there's a lot of um, astrologists talking about how difficult and challenging this eclipse is going to be for North America specifically, I think really heavily the U.S., and I absolutely agree with that. I feel that. But I know that though it looks like a negative moment or event or experience, it is a purge and it needs to be purged in order for us to rise, right? We have to purge it. And that means we have to get a little messy, get a little into our darkness, specifically around judgment, separation and that that anger. Okay. So, this is also going to affect Gaia, okay? Of course, everything that affects us affects her and everything that affects her affects us. We really can't separate ourselves from her energy. We're standing on her. <laughs> like we're on her surface and she's right there. Um and she's in everything on the earth too. So, so how this looks for Gaia, like Gaia also, by the way, experiences all the solar flares that you experience. She experiences all the ascension symptoms that you experience. Like she's going through it too, literally going through the photon belts of light. She's going. Um, so for Gaia, this might look like the purge might look like a Schumann activity that's irregular spikes of Schumann energy. So you can keep your eye on the Schumann resonance charts during that time of April 8th. Um, and, and, and then environmental or natural events. Because Gaia, when she wants to purge something, and, and it's something bigger, it comes out like a natural disaster a lot of the time. I know that's hard to hear, but it, it, do, it just does. It's like when she needs to clear something, she like floods it or sets it on fire or sends a tidal wave or a hurricane, like something, volcano. Like if that happens around this time of April 8th, if you're seeing stuff like that coming up, it is the purge, right? And again, remember it is, you could almost think of the, the solar eclipse, like when the blackness moves over the sun, it acts like a void or a sucking black hole that starts to pull like a vacuum, everything up into it. And so if it's doing that for humanity, it's going up this way. But if it's doing it for Gaia, again, up this way. So, so she might experience like a purge event that could be fairly large as well. So these are all just things that can happen. Now, we can't say exactly what will happen. And we have to remember that free will is, is like the main deal here on Earth. And because of free will... We can't totally predict things. That's why I really don't like too much doing too many predictions things because it's like you can predict general energy and what that could cause on a timeline. And then some big players could make a totally different decision and put you on a whole other timeline. So you have to keep in mind timelines shift quickly, especially now, um, but that this eclipse energy is going to act like that pulling upwards pulling the, the judgment energies and the separation or the angers, the fear frequency, which is another low one, right? Pulling it up out of the top of your head and you'll feel it in the heart hit and then you'll feel it in the head hit. Okay, and Gaia is going to feel it with her Schumann and potentially, potentially environmental events, okay? Humanity on the whole, how they're going to experience it, let's talk about the macro effect of the collective. They're going to experience it like social issues, okay? So the feeling like, um, so basically, okay, no, let me just say this first. So basically this is like the feeling that something comes to light. Okay. And remember this is focused on North America mainly. So Canada might be in there a bit, but it does feel like it's heavily focused on the U S something happening or coming to light, like something dark, um, being revealed or something dark hitting an apex and the the way that the collective is going to respond is in a purging way, which is them all jumping on a bandwagon of that cancel culture, right? We've seen how how disturbing it can be when like so many millions of people in the world all jump on a bandwagon and decide to cancel something or someone or or spread hate or judgment or fear frequency. Um, and that's what it feels like. It's like, it's like that the event or something coming to light and then 
everyone's jumping on a bandwagon of judgment and hate and anger. And they're all getting into this like cancel culture. Now, what is the event? What is the thing that comes to light? This could be a couple of things, okay? This definitely feels like there's a high potential that this could be political, right? So something coming to light politically. So maybe that could, if it's in the US, that could involve, we know somebody that triggers a lot of people is Trump, but it could involve really any kind of politician where something that they've been doing or that they say triggers a bandwagon reaction of cancel culture and mob mentality. Um, so think politics, potentially Trump, or think another really uh, sensitive topic since 2020 is healthcare issues, pharmaceutical stuff. So something could happen with that as well. So politics or healthcare, potentially some triggering people in there, like maybe Trump or Trudeau or something like that. And what it does is it activates mob mentality and people get lose their shit. When they get into the mob mentality, they lose all compassion. <laughs> they lose like all all of their compassion, they lose all of their ability to see reason, they lose their ability to put themselves in someone's shoes and be forgiving. And it's just pure, like fiery hatred, judgment, anger. That's the purge. That's the level of purge, like fire coming out of people because they, they need an outlet to purge and they'll pick a scapegoat and then pff, everything at it, right? So Remember when I said that, it, but is it negative? It might look negative from the outside. It might feel negative. It might feel scary. It might feel overwhelming. Um, I feel like we've been through so much over the last four years, we can handle anything. And we also know that just because something appears negative does not mean that it is. It could absolutely be this like very helpful, deep, deep clearing of our lower chakras, of the very lands of Gaia, like purging from such a deep place, even ancestral stuff from like the, the, the societies before us, ancient societies coming out of the earth. It needs, it, it needs like, we are almost like when you turn a tap on and it can pour out of you, right? Like it, it, it almost needs people to be a channel to express it, to get it out. So it's definitely going to involve a lot of people. Now, I just want to say this is not coming from a place of fear. This is like a flash that I saw at the end and I tried to push it away multiple times and it kept coming back as a potential, just a potential, not a, not a confirm, nothing. You can't, like I said, you can't predict stuff. Um, you can predict energy, but you can't predict how people react to energy, right? So I'm just saying, I saw this, like what I would call like an act of war that reminded me a lot of like 9-11 and it was like, I saw this, this big building and then I saw like an explosion kind of a thing. And so why would they show me that? I like push it away multiple times because I think the potential there is that when people are being triggered so big and their own demons and shadows are coming to the surface that they can, the mob mentality can create a lot more harmful things than just cancel culture which is strictly more like online bullying, it can create people to take destructive action as well. So we don't know how humanity is going to react to this energy, but we know that there's an awful lot that can be purged. There's an, there's an awful lot in our own bodies, in our lower chakras. There's an awful lot in Gaia, in the lands. There's an awful lot in like, if if you look at like society having layers and the deepest things are in the hidden layers, there's a lot that could come to light to be purged. So again, what's going to be uncovered, what's going to happen to trigger this, this jumping on the bandwagon of this mob mentality or this cancel culture. I mean, the real, the real, um, culprit is the eclipse. I mean, that is what it is. It's the energy of the eclipse, right? But what actions will it trigger people into? We're about to find out. So I, uh, that's all I have for you about the eclipse energy. So I think like uh, the best way for you to prepare to spend this time would be like choosing to understand that if you also feel triggered by whatever it is that comes up over this, this time, this window of time, if you choose to be an example of forgiveness and compassion, like you, if you feel the initial 
purge of your own anger and judgment and wanting to judge whatever it is and the people involved and hate and all of that. Yeah, you need to purge it too. So you're going to feel that way. But awareness, I think the best thing is just like how much awareness can you have about, oh, I'm purging my own stuff. And you don't need to scapegoat somebody in order to do that. And you don't need to add to the fear. You don't need to add to the mob mentality. So do your best not to add to the chaos so that it doesn't get like a forest fire out of control. It's going to be fiery like that. But keep experience your own purge that's healthy. You do want to do that. But try not to connect your personal stuff to fueling the flames of like some big kind of like mob mentality thing. Okay. Um, so what else? So be super aware about around that, about not jumping on any bandwagons, about not jumping to conclusions, knowing that things that come up on like online are always like one-sided and we find out the truth months later. So don't judge a book by its cover with that. Um, keep, keep a cool head and stay very, very self-aware. Okay. I knew that I was going to feel this. I knew stuff was going to start coming up, whether it's your own personal stuff. Like I was saying, like weird old memories and dreams about past jobs and relationships and all that. It's just a purge. It can't hurt you. I know you're not that person anymore. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. It's nothing to get upset about or triggered over. Just be, stay open, stay open, stay open. Keep crown chakra open, keep the heart open, let it flow through, let it flow through. It will come to an end. Okay. It's a very, very powerful, intense clearing, but don't close up. Don't close up here and don't close up here. Cause when we close up, everything that's trying to be purged gets trapped and it makes it so much worse. Right? So, so really what you could be doing beyond the awareness that I've, I've said is heart opening exercises or crown chakra opening exercises so that the energy doesn't build up and cause physical pain or emotional pain or stay with you longer than you need to actually be dealing with something so heavy. So stay open, stay calm, let yourself purge, but in an awareness where you're not adding to any fuel to any crazy fires, stay in your own lane, reserve judgment until we have all the facts. You know what I mean? Like, let's just not lose our heads over this, over this time period. It's an, it's not helpful, right? It's helpful to purge. That's the whole point of this. And, and that's the positive side, but it's not helpful to everybody lose their heads and and choose a lower timeline during this time of this void okay so let me know if you have questions below i'll try to make sure that i answer them before the actual eclipse comes in um if anything additional comes through i'll absolutely share that with you but let's not drop into fear frequency over something that's really healthy and needed in your own body and in gaia and in the collective like it's going to be really really intense but it's going to be really really amazing afterwards that all of that is out of the way right and then we can return to peace and we can return to building that unity consciousness again okay i love you guys so much so if you're wanting to be able to channel stuff like this again don't forget about channeler of light it's this beautiful eight-week course it's, a, it's like a transformational journey i can't wait to get started in april um, grab your seat now while the pre-sale is on because it's going to be ending really soon. I'm probably going to be like in the next five days closing it down, honestly. So grab your seat um, now while it's at a pre-sale price. Um, and if you have questions about Channeler of Light or anything, please always feel free to come chat with me over on Instagram. It's an easy place to have a conversation. Okay, so come find me over there at Starseed Academy with the blue check. I love you guys so much. I'm with you. We're going to get through this. There'll be more videos before April 8th hits, so don't worry. I'm considering possibly doing an event that day to help with everything, but we'll see. Okay? Cuz I also want to be I also want to be in my own presence and intentionality for my own timeline. So I'm going to think hard on doing that. Um okay, if you're still here, thank you. I love you. Please remember. Listen to your heart and the quiet voice with me. Because you are so much more than the body you are in. I love you, beautiful star seeds. Bye.